Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl Mahoney and I blog at Tales of the Marvelous, that's MarvelousTales.com, mostly about books and writing. So with that kind of focus, I'm not usually doing a lot of posts that are particularly topical. Possibly a new release, or maybe at Christmas I'll do something Christmas related. But today, it's March 22nd, 2020, and the date feels relevant because the world is changing very rapidly with every day. We're in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. Pretty much everyone I know is trying very hard to stay at home, and the world is kind of a scary place at the moment. So it's a good day to make videos. I will probably post this tomorrow, so you may be watching this on the 23rd. And I hope some of you are watching it in the more distant future where all of this looks like a weird piece of history. Right now, though, it's kind of a scary world. So I decided it's a good day to review a book that I think is one of the most helpful I've ever read for dealing with scary, tragic, really difficult things in life. So today I'm talking about When Bad Things Happen to Good People by Harold Kushner. You may have heard of it. It's something of a classic and it's a really excellent book. It's, it's quite short, you can see, but it is absolutely packed with wisdom and just powerful faith comments. Basically, it addresses the question for a person of faith, of religion, however you define your faith. I think it's pretty broadly applicable. Where is the place of faith and where is the place of God when terrible things happen, when a disease sweeps through the world and the disease doesn't care if you're good or bad or loved or not, it just happens. And how do we reconcile that? So Kushner, who is actually a Jewish rabbi, wrote this book in response to his son's death. His son was born of some kind of degenerative disease, I believe died when he was about 12. And Kushner knew that was coming and he knew he was going to write about the experience. Although he says, I believe in the foreword, that as he experienced his son's life and his son's death, the book he ended up writing was not the book he expected to write. So he really explores I don't quite want to say he has answers. I think he explores questions and he offers insights. Uh, for the longest time, I meant to read this book before I actually read it. And for some reason, I had it in my head that the title was Why Bad Things Happen to Good People. Now that I've read it, I understand why that's not the title because it, there's nothing that definite. There is no answer to that. But I found that the book addresses a lot of it and still offers a lot of comfort. The closest thing he has to an answer of basically why does God not prevent terrible things is that that is not God's role. That is not what is intended to be the response to prayer. Um, he looks at some of the kind of explanations people have tried to give, why they are not very satisfactory in many ways or not very satisfying in many ways and kind of concludes that we don't have an answer, but that doesn't mean we have to lose faith and that there isn't a role for God in terrible things. And that that is in fact a really important place for God to be. Uh, I read this book. I've also read a couple of his other books. They're all really excellent, really offering a lot of, I'd say comfort and insight in difficult times, or if you're not in difficult times, just to really explore faith as well. Although I think we're all in slightly difficult times and some of us in very difficult times right now. So it's a particularly relevant book. I actually, I keep a journal of spiritual quotes from the books that I read and uh, you can see my handwriting there. And I did keep a journal with some quotes when I read Rabbi Kushner to begin with. And I thought I would actually share some of his because I can talk about his book but I think his words are very powerful. So I think the closest thing to a sum up of, I mean, you can't sum up an entire book, but the closest thing to sum up, the closest answer he has. Here's a quote that I wrote down. To the person who asks, what good is God? I would say that God may not prevent the calamity, but he gives us the strength and the perseverance to overcome it. So that's a big theme he explores, that prayer, praying for something to not happen may or may not work, but praying for strength to get through what happens 
is a more powerful, more likely way that you're going to receive a response. He actually, I wrote down a quote about that as well. People who pray for miracles usually don't get miracles, but people who pray for courage, for strength to bear the unbearable, for the grace to remember what they have left instead of what they have lost, very often find their prayers answered. That I know has impacted my faith life, my prayer life, when I think about what I'm praying. We're getting a little personal now. <laughs> um, but I think that I find it's a helpful and important thing to keep in mind. He also talks about prayer as serving the purpose of connection. Another quote. The first thing prayer does for us is to put us in touch with other people. People who share the same concerns, values, dreams, and pains that we do. That it may not even be about the answer to your prayer. It may just be about reaching out and praying with others and for others and forming those human connections. And I think prayer is often also, or should be also, about a relationship with God as well as with people. And so the answer is only part of it. The act of reaching out is also very important. And all of this is explored in greater depth and more eloquently than I am saying in, in Rabbi Kushner's book. Uh, he talks also about people want to, I mean, when you're asking why, sometimes it's asking about the result or the meaning, and he addresses that as well. I'll read a little more. Let me suggest that the bad things that happen to us in our lives do not have a meaning when they happen to us. We can redeem these tragedies from senselessness by imposing meaning on them. The question we should be asking is not, why did this happen to me? What did I do to deserve this? A better question would be, now that this has happened to me, what am I going to do about it? And just to be very clear on that, I personally don't believe, and I don't think Rabbi Kushner believes, that terrible things are happening because they have to for some kind of greater good or because God is sending them to us in some way. What he's saying and what I also believe is that bad things happen, but we can choose to find meaning in them. We can choose to identify what good thing came out of them. And I also believe God can bring good things out of bad things. That doesn't mean the bad thing was good. That doesn't mean it should have happened in some way. But you can still look at a tragedy and say, this is a tragedy that I wish had never happened. But I appreciate and value the good thing that came out of it as well. Humans are amazing. We can hold almost paradoxical thoughts like that in our head. And I think it's especially in tragedies that we find ourselves doing that kind of dance of trying to find that balance. So I think that's an important insight as well that, that is explored. I mentioned I've read another book by him, and I thought I had my other journal with some other quotes from that book, and apparently I don't as I'm looking, you can't see, I'm looking in front of me. I'm not going to stop the video, I'm just going to paraphrase, because he had a particular quote that I thought was very relevant to the present, that when we pray in regards to illness, it's not God's job to fix sick people. That is the doctor's job. It's God's job to love us and support us through these experiences. I know people have different beliefs about what they think God does, what they think God responds to prayers with, and I would never want to dispute that with anyone. Um, I think everyone should and needs to have their own faith, but that is one insight, that is one perspective that I feel like could be helpful, especially as we're dealing with this situation. So, Rabbi Kushner, when bad things happen to good people, it may not have answers, but it asks a lot of questions. And without trying to answer questions that have been asked for thousands of years, it feels like there's, there's at least some glimmer of an answer. There's certainly a lot of insights that you can consider, potentially take on board, and maybe find some comfort at least in a very scary world. So I hope you'll think about it as a possibility. I hope it will help you if you do decide to explore it. And I hope you and all of your loved ones are staying safe and well in a scary world.